Here is a comparison between the 2024 Toyota Corolla Hatchback SE and the Toyota Corolla Sedan SE, both in ice cap. I'm gonna go over some pros and cons, the problem that I have, and show you the differences between the two. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and you're gonna notice that right in the fascia, both LED headlights, but the integration is different. On the hatch, it goes into the Toyota badging, whereas on the sedan, the Toyota badging is placed on top. Both will get the sport mesh grill with the gloss black elements. However, when you go to the sedan, unless you're doing an XSE, this is gonna look a lot more sporty with 5.3 inches of clearance, whereas here's a 5.1 inches of clearance. The XSE for the hatch will receive LED fog lights. It's the only trim that gets it for the hatch. The hatchback receives three trims. The sedan gets four trims, both powered with the same powertrain. It's a 2.0 liter, four cylinder, producing 169 horsepower with 151 pound-feet of torque paired to a CVT transmission. MPGs, 31 to the city, 40 for the highway for the sedan. You're getting one MPG more city and highway, both with the sport tuned suspension. But on the sedan, 18 inch gloss black alloy wheels, the gloss black elements on the side skirt, all the windows are going to get the matte black. It just has more of a sport vibe, opposed to the hatch is a 16 inch wheel. You gotta go up to the XSE to make this look a lot more athletic and which will give you that 18 inch wheel and give you more of that aesthetics to make it look a lot more dynamic. But if you're comparing it against the Honda Civic hatch, this is going to look more sporty. The same thing with the Mazda 3 hatch. But comparing this back to the sedan, that's gonna look the most athletic and yet you're gonna get some savings. The rear of the hatch gets C-structure LED taillights and the sedan will keep a more traditional taillight assembly. Touch of the gloss black on the lower bumper for the hatchback. But you have to tick the box again for the XSC to make this look as dynamic as that sedan because we're getting a diffuser, dual exhaust outlets, a trunk lid spoiler. Takes me to the big problem that I have on the exterior for the hatchback. It's one of the most sporty hatches in its segment. And yet, when you go SE, it's not. The sedan takes it, and yet the sedan is more of a traditional looking vehicle. It shouldn't be the case that I have to go up to the XSE trim in order to make this look as athletic, considering they're both getting the same powertrain and the same suspension, all of which are gonna have a quick release. The sedan is going to sit up a little bit and the opening is not going to be as much as a hatchback but it will still have quite a bit of storage capabilities. Underneath the floor gets a spare tire and to fold down the rear seats, you have to go into the back. The same thing for the hatch, except it sits a little bit lower. The bumper comes out a little bit more so. A wider opening, and because we have a spare tire, we're losing some cargo capacity, but you can option to not have that, in which you'll increase cargo about five cubic feet. You'll still get storage on both sides, with the privacy cover, and with the hatchback, it's a little bit easier because if you're tall like me, you can just simply fold the back seats from the cargo area and that will max cargo capacity to the hatch. Whereas on the sedan, even if you're tall like me, you'll still have to go into the back and push these little levers in. In which you'll have more cargo capacity, but you'll have a bit of a hump from the back seats. Headroom and leg room. The hatchback is what we're starting off with. The SE is going to be the base trim. There's no LE trim. Standard six speakers with an eight inch infotainment screen, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM AM FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. Put it into reverse and you have a reverse camera. The trajectory will not expand with an automatic climate control. The center here is going to be a little bit more tight with an option for a wireless charger, USB ports. Whereas on the sedan, it's a little bit more opened up. Both receive the sport mode because the SE trim and the gloss black elements and the key fob for the sedan. But check out the hatch, no trunk release going to be pushed back. This slides up and back. It doesn't do that on the LE sedan. Opens up to a 12 volt with a USB port. The steering wheel is a leather wrap, multi-function. You get the paddle shifts, 4.2 
information display for the gauge cluster. Seven inch is only going to be on the XSE. And the door panel is going to get the contrast stitch in white. Whereas on the sedan, we get it in the red, same size storage pocket. The hatchback, you're gonna set up a little bit higher. Leg space, it's gonna be a little bit tighter, but you'll have storage behind both of the front seats. Whereas on the sedan, you will not receive that. Both will get two USB ports, cup holders with armrests, and the headroom for the sedan will be a little bit more so. The door is going to have the same materials found in the front, except here we get like a flask or an umbrella holder. Whereas on the hatch, you receive one cup or bottle holder. Sliding into the center, the floor is not completely flat. The rails are pushed back a little bit too much. So I'm gonna be sharing some feet, but leg shoulder space and headroom for the hatch. Whereas on the sedan, it will be about the same except for your leg space, but shoulder and feet space will be a little bit more so in the sedan. 169 horsepower is out of both of them. I've taken the hatchback out first in which both get a sport tune suspension and three driving modes. And look at the performance. Something about a hatchback that just feels a little bit more sporty and quick than the numbers actually project. You sit a little bit lower, about 0.2 inches less in clearance with the hatch, but because we have 16 inch wheels, the drive I would assume is gonna be a little bit more comfortable in this, even though you're lower to the ground. You feel like you're lower to the ground, but you sit up high in the seat position. Visibility is good. Blind spot monitoring is an option on this trim, which we do not have. But the engagement is still playful. It's gonna take me to some pros and cons about the hatch. Starting with the pros is I like how it feels quicker, feels a little bit more sporty inside. I dislike that if you want to use the full cargo capacity, you more than likely you're gonna to have to move the front seats up because you will not be able to fold them down. And you have to pay extra in order to get extra cargo capacity, but I like that you're getting a spare tire, at least a lot of people in the comments like getting a spare tire. Turn radius for the hatch. It's small, about two lanes, it's rock and roll. It's not gonna throw you back in your seat, so don't think of it that way. You only got a little bit over 150 pound-feet of torque. And the road noise does become a little bit more excessive at higher speeds. Going against comparable rivals like Honda and Mazda, this feels like it sits a little bit lower to the ground, even though the seat setting is a little bit higher up and you will have the least amount of leg space and head space for the second row. Cargo is also going to be compromised when you're thinking about the Honda Civic because it's a longer vehicle. And in the front, I kind of would like to see a little bit difference in the configuration from the sedan to the hatch. That way it would just kind of give me a different feel and vibe in the interior. I'm not a huge fan of the infotainment screen that comes out and the dashboard also pops out more so, making it a little bit less with leg and knee space for the passenger. And you have to go up to the XSE to make this look as sporty on the exterior as the sedan and getting that seven inch gauge cluster or a standard wireless charger. So the big problem that I have with the hatch is the lack of amenities when we're getting into the SE because we don't have an LE trim. I like hatchbacks a little bit more than sedans because they don't feel as grown up, but let's see how the ride is on the sedan. Turn radius at more or less a stop point. It's a little bit more than the hatch. Here we go. No paddle shifts will be on the sedan SE, but you get it on the hatchback. It doesn't feel as quick. Feels a little bit more bumpy with these 18 inch wheels and the clearance is actually better in this than the hatch. The steering is basically about the same. There's not too much weight added. It feels a little bit longer and a little bit wider. Going against the rivals like Kia, Honda, Hyundai, Mazda. The Kia Forte, when you go to the GT, 
it's going to be a little bit more sporty and a little bit more quick, especially for the price variant because you don't have that in the Corolla unless you go GR Corolla in which the price changes not significantly, but it's a lot higher. Going against Honda, it's a little bit more grown up. And when you're looking at the sedan, they do the same thing. You'll have a different grill pattern, but the interior, you feel like you're sitting a little bit lower to the ground, even in the sedan where you're sitting higher up here. As for Mazda, you have more plush materials in the sedan. The hatch will be a little bit more tight and a lot more blind spots. That's going to take me to some pros and cons in which the sedan, you get more leg space and head space for the back seats, more cargo capacity, but then it lacks in door pocket storage. It's still more than the hatch. It's going to be a little bit more noisy and you have more clearance. You still have to option features, but the SE is one of the sweet spots because you get a lot of bang for your buck when you go into the sedan opposed to the hatch where you're not really getting that bang for your value in which that takes me to the big problem that i have with the sedan this is 10.5 inches longer than the hatch and yet it doesn't have that much more head leg room for the second row storage in the door pocket storage in the cargo and when i'm thinking camry to corolla that's another 10 inches difference in length and that's going to be night and day difference when i'm thinking of actual space so i feel like they just don't utilize the space as wisely as they do in the hatch opposed to the sedan but let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you're new to the channel consider subscribing check out the next video merchandise website and instagram leave a comment and a like and i'd like to thank ghetto stadium toyota for giving us these two 2024 toyota corollas the sedan and the hatchback both se trims for our car review